Okay, so now that we've proved the myhill neuron theorem, uh, what I actually asked, or what I said in the lecture is, okay, so we have this fancy result. So actually, who really cares, right? So what's nice about myhill neuron is that it can be used for actually several things. So the first thing is that it can be used, oops, can be used to show that L is regular. So, you know, of course, if a language L is regular, then you can use my help in the road to show that L is regular, right? If instead, and so how would you do that? Sorry, how would you do that? You would just find uh, the equivalence classes of this guy, right? And then you'd find the equivalence classes and then show that there's a finite number of equivalence classes. And that would prove by theorem that L is regular, right? Because it would prove that there is a DFA M that accepts L. And so uh, we have another if and only if, or just by definition, we know that that means that L is regular, okay? The other thing is that we could also show that L is not regular, okay? Um, and so how would you do this? You would have to find, um, well, actually, I'll talk about it a bit more, uh, but you need to show that this equivalence relation has infinite index. Okay. And the other thing that it can be used for, it can be used to prove the minimality. Or actually, it can be proved to... It can be used to prove the uniqueness, not just the minimality, the uniqueness of um, the minimal DFA. And this is something that I didn't talk about, the about in the lecture that um, I'll talk about later, okay? Um, and so, but here what we're actually interested in is we're interested in, in showing how to do this. So that's what we're going to do first. So. To do that, we're going to look back our, at our motivating example, right? So remember, we had this language, okay, I, B, J, C, K, which said that if I is equal 1, then J is equal K. Okay, and we can actually use, right? So we can use my home the road to prove L is not regular. Okay, so how do we do that? What's the strategy? So we can use the following strategy. So one, uh, we need to find an infinite number of strings, okay? And so just for, for my purposes, just to make things easier and, and sort of more illustrat illustrative, I'll just say that I create a, a, a set of strings, okay? But you don't have to really think of this as a set. You can just say, okay, I need to find an infinite number of strings of some kind of pattern, right? So I'll just write it this way. We create um, an infinite set of strings S, a set of strings S. This set uh, is like, it has nothing really to do with L. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be a subset or uh, a superset, you just need an infinite number of strings, okay? And you're just saying that these uh, uh, sets of strings, like these, this set of strings, uh, there's an infinite number of them, okay? So first you have to create an infinite set of strings. So of course, finding the correct one is the hardest thing. Um, but then once you do that, uh, you can show, if you show that for every x, y, and s, um, if x is not the same as y, then this implies that x is not equivalent via this equivalence relation uh, to y, right? So, right, the next thing you do is, okay, you have this infinite set of strings, s. Now what you do is you pick, you, you need to show that for every distinct pair of strings, uh, this pair of strings is not related via this equivalence relation. So then 
right? How do you do that? You need to pick arbitrary x, y, and s for which x is different than y. And then you need to show uh, you need to show this, right? Well, how do you do that? Well, you need to use the definition of the equivalence relation, right? So this, what does this mean? This means that there exists a string, right? For which either of the two things are true, right? Either of these two thing, things are true. X, Z is an L and Y, Z is not an L or X, Z is not an L and Y, Z is an L. Okay, because, right, why? So this is just by definition of this guy and by using plus the negation of the definition, okay? And so then step three um, is really just, okay, what does this actually mean, right? And so this shows that each string in S is actually is in its own equivalence class, right? I'm not saying that the equivalence class just contains one element. I don't care if there's other stuff in the element. I'm just showing that there's an equivalence class for each of these elements, for each of these strings in S, right? Um, but because since S is infinite, right, this uh, implies that uh, this guy has an infinite number of equivalence classes, okay, which implies that, uh, right, just by definition, this equivalence relation has infinite index. And so by my hill in the road, right, so by my hill in the road, this implies that there does not exist a DFA M that accepts L, right? There isn't any DFA M that can accept uh, L uh, or recognize L. And so uh, by definition of what it means for a language to be regular, that means that L is not regular. Right? Okay, I maybe shouldn't have started this example here, so, but this is just the general strategy. Uh, whoops. This is the general strategy uh, to do this. All right, so. Um, so, all right, strategy to use when prove what regular. Okay. Um, okay, good. So, this is actually related to what I was saying here. All right, and so now let's actually look at an example, which I remember uh, I did rush at the end of the lecture. Um, so here, I'm going to be uh, clever, right? And I'm going to pick the set S, or I'm just going to say that my strings are going to have the form A and then BI for I greater or equal to zero. All right, so clearly S is infinite, right? So I has no bound, it's boundless. So I can be arbitrarily large, so I can have an arbitrarily large string, and so S is clearly infinite, right? So this is clearly an infinite set. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to pick X, Y, and S, where X is different from Y, right? Okay, so please make sure you understand why exactly I'm doing it this way, okay? Don't just memorize the procedure, just understand that I'm trying to, uh, negate the um, definition of this equivalence relation, right? So uh, to do that, I need to show, right, to show that this is true, I need to negate the definition, right, of this equivalence uh, relation. And so what that means is I need to find the string 
for which x in the net string and then y in that string are not in L, right? are not both in L, okay? Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick two strings that um, are going to be distinct. Um, and so because I don't know anything about these strings other than the fact that they're different, right? All I know is that x looks like a, b, i, and y looks like a, b, j, and i is different from j, right? That's all I know, okay? Okay. And so now what I need to show, I need to show that, right? So I want to show that this is not related to this. Okay. So how do I actually show that, right? So I need to find a Z in Sigma star such that um, XZ is an L and YZ is not an L or vice versa. Okay. So in other words, essentially, I'm at this stage where I myself have to pick, I have to find the Z, right? So my goal is to find the Z, to find this Z. And so here, if I'm uh, clever, I can see that if I pick Z as CI, right? So this is the same I as this guy here. So. Uh, in other words, it's also the same i that's different from j, okay? So what that means is, right, so this implies that xz is, uh, well, it's a, b, i, and then c, i, right? So that's just a, b, i, c, i, right? And y, z is a, b, j, c, i, right? Because that's... This is what y is, this is what z is, so that's just a, b, j, c, i. Okay, well here, I have one a, right? And the number of b's is equal to the number of c's, and so based on the definition of what it means for a string to be an L, this string is an L, right? Okay, because the number of b's and c's are in the right spot, and they're the same, okay? And so it matches the pattern of what, uh, well, not the pattern, sorry, it matches the definition of uh, a string in this specific language L. But here, this other string is not in L, right? Why? Because again, I have one A, but here, um, this condition is negated, right? Because this says that if I have one A, Right? If i is 1, then the j's, the number of b's, must equal the number of c's. But here I have b, j, c, i. And I know, because I picked the strings to be not the same, that i and j isn't the same integer. Right? And so this guy is not an l. Right? And so by definition um, of the equivalence relation equivalence l, this implies that x is not related to y. Right? Again, this is by definition of the equivalence relation. Right? So what does this mean? Right? This means that for any distinct pair of strings in S, x, y, we have we have that x is not related to y, right? So this implies that each of these distinct pairs, so x and y and each of these other distinct pairs, have their own, or it's not like, it's not like, I'm not necessarily arguing that the equivalence class is only containing x. I'm saying that um, they have their own uh, corresponding equivalence relation. Maybe there's more stuff, equivalence class, sorry. Maybe there's more stuff in this equivalence class. Maybe not. I don't know, right? But because um, I have an infinite number 
of these pairs of strings, right? So this implies that um, I have an infinite number of these equivalence classes, right? And so just by the definition of the index of an equivalence relation, this means that this equivalence relation has infinite index, right? And so that negates uh, statement three in my Helmut road, which means that all the other statements are negated. So namely statement one is negated. Um, that is, there is no DFA that accepts the language L. And so that means that, whoops, this means that L is not regular by my hill neurote. Okay, and that's essentially um, how you prove that this language is not regular using my hill neurote. Um, and I think that concludes the actual material that I covered during the lecture.